Hangar 1. Well, hello everyone. How you doing today? I'm back. Thanks for joining us, Gladius. Well, you probably know what we're looking at. We're looking at the Gladius this time. The regular one, not the pirate one. The one that's green, at least when it starts out. Mmm. Mmm, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Anyhow, <laughs> so I can stop drooling. It really does just look so good. Anyhow. <laughs> this is the Gladius, brought to you by Aegis, as you can read there on the screen. Uh, it is in Hangar 1. Can't believe they actually put it in a small hangar for a change, as opposed to putting it into a giant hangar. For whatever reason, they like to put these things in Hangar 12 sometimes. But, we have looked at this ship before. This time we're looking at it again, this time with a little bit more of the format of the show, the series that we've been running. Uh, it is a flying cockpit as usual, because it is just a fighter. There's no interior to it except for the seat and what you see. Uh, so there's not really a whole lot to talk about except that it looks like an actual fighter jet. This one's green. <laughs> I wonder, can I climb up this? I want to climb up this. Let me climb. Climb. I like climbing. Can I climb up this? Let me climb! <laughs> Alright, fine. Oh, and last time somebody informed me that this is just the, s the store? Well, see, that's his quantum drive access. So the quantum drive is down there too. But it's also the personal storage area and the fuel access. Huh. For in flight refueling. Here's the storage box. So we got the storage box on the right side of the ship. We have a little fuel access in the butthole of the ship. We have the quantum drive. Diagnostics. Where's the OBD2 part? I don't see an OBD OBD2. I wonder, I mean, I know it's not old enough to be an OBD1. Maybe it's an OBD10 or something, being what year it is. But anyhow, before we take off and get in and everything, let's go ahead and take a look at the Oracle real quick. All right, here we go with the Urkel. It's got a Ballistic Gatling, Mantis GT220 on the front, on the nose there. We're, we're going with more DPS on the, the base Gladius than what comes with the pirate version because the pirate version sacrifices a little bit of size in the weapon for a gimbal, and this one is not gimbaled. This, these guns are fixed alongside those two Panthers that are also fixed laser repeaters all of which are size 3 weapons so you could actually ultimately just put three size 3 panthers on it if you really wanted to and it'll be fine size 1 beacon quantum drive uh it's fast it just won't get you anywhere <laughs> you will have to upgrade if you want to leave like your your own little subsystem you're not going to make it very far in uh in anywhere with the beacon comes with two arrestor threes cross sections you know my opinion on cross sections they're they're all right they're not great uh four ignite two infrareds a little bit better there and then we've got two size one all stop shields with a total of 3,000 hit points on the bubble because being a small ship fighter ship it is going to have a bubble shield that all sides count as one Power plant, size 1 Regulus, gets the job done. I don't even think you need to upgrade it if you actually put the uh, three Panthers on it. And then the two coolers are bracers, size 1s. Anyhow, moving on, you can buy this ship at New Deal, Lorville, for 1,169,900 AUEC. Back to the reveal. Alright, welcome back. We're hopping into this thing. As you see, I'm going the safe route of being naked as usual. Let's go ahead and start her up. Whoops, wrong button. <laughs> Aegis combat system activated. Systems green. Ah yes, Aegis and that voice. Systems green. All right, let's go ahead and get the door open, get taken off, and we get out of here. Thank you. And go, go fly, let's go fly, kite. Now because every ship in this game is a spaceship, we basically all have VTOL. That is amazing. I don't think this ship is going to be like that forever. Because I have a feeling this is going to be one of the ships that gets reworked into having like wheels and shit. <laughs> Maybe not. It would honestly make more sense for this ship to be a, a runway takeoff than a hangar. Hmm. 
I do want to fly up, not sideways. <laughs> he is a quick little guy. Flies pretty fast. We're already pretty high off the ground. But that is not where this thing technically shines. This thing technically shines in combat. So let's go find ourselves a target. I'll be right back. Good, 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 going to the good times, temple. I'm here, Luis, Luis. And yes, I'm still practicing getting used to the idea of uh, having to be in the safe zone of flying for combat. Because I know that we're going to lose the ability to be balls to the wall during combat here pretty soon. Whenever that comes out. <laughs> Which one of you is my target? There he is. I can't tell what it is. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this set up a little bit. This is a VHRT, so it might take a couple more decoys than normal. <laughs> I'm going to try to go after just the main target, because I don't think I'm going to have enough in me to go after everyone. <laughs> he is certainly having a hard time going after me. Come on, stay on target. Oops. Wrong button. Oh well. Still got lasers. Maybe we should go after the rest of them. Screw it. Let's see, what are you flying in? You're in a saber? <laughs> yeah, I'm not afraid to rub. Rubbin's racing, dude. There we go. Good way to end it. <laughs> Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and come back for more. Later.